Nursing assessment of the integumentary system includes both subjective and objective data. Let's start with the subjective assessment. During this phase, you should ask the patient about their self-care behaviors, history of skin disease, current medications, environmental or occupational hazards, any toxic substances exposure, skin color or pigmentation changes, and changes in moles or sores that are not healing. Once you've completed the subjective assessment, it's time to move on to the inspection phase. Here you should inspect the skin for general color and pigmentation, vascularity, bruising, any lesions or discolorations, and any unusual odors. The critical factor in assessing skin color is change. A skin color that's normal for one patient can be a sign of a pathologic condition in another. Skin color depends on the amount of melanin, carotene, oxyhemoglobin, and reduced hemoglobin present at a particular time. True skin color is best observed in photoprotected areas such as the buttocks. Lesser pigmented areas are the most reliable areas to assess for erythema, cyanosis, pallor, and jaundice. These areas are the sclera and conjunctiva, nail beds, lips, and buccal mucosa. Examine the skin for possible problems related to vascularity, such as bruising and vascular and purpuric lesions like angiomas, petechia, and purpura. Note the reaction to direct pressure. If a lesion blanches on direct pressure and then refills, the redness is due to dilated blood vessels. If it doesn't blanch and the discoloration remains, it's the result of subcutaneous or intradermal bleeding or a non-vascular lesion. No patterns of bruising, such as the shape of the hand or fingers or bruises at different stages of resolution, which may indicate abuse or other health problems. Skin lesions should also be noted, including their color, size, distribution, location, and shape. They are usually described in terms related to their configuration and distribution. Configuration refers to whether they are solitary or patterned in relation to other lesions, while distribution refers to the arrangement of lesions over an area of skin. Distribution terminology includes the following terms. Asymmetric is a unilateral distribution of lesions, meaning they are present on only one side of the body. Confluent distribution refers to lesions that merge together, making it difficult to see where one lesion ends and another begins. Diffuse lesions are usually widely spread over the body. Discrete distribution refers to lesions that are separate from other lesions, such as separate individual spots of chickenpox. Generalized lesions are diffuse and spread over a large area of the body. Group lesions are a cluster of lesions that are located closely together. Localized distribution refers to limited areas of involvement that are clearly defined, such as psoriasis on the elbows and knees. Solitary distribution refers to a single lesion. Symmetric lesions are distributed bilaterally, meaning they are present on both sides of the body. Zosteriform is a band-like distribution of lesions that follows a dermatome, which is an area of skin that's supplied by a single nerve root. This is seen in conditions like herpes zoster, also known as shingles. For more information regarding types of skin lesions, watch this video on primary and secondary skin lesions. Note any unusual odors. Skin sites with lesions such as rashes may be colonized with yeast or bacteria, which can be associated with distinctive odors in the intertriginous area, such as the skin folds. Inspection of the hair should include an examination of all body hair, noting the distribution, texture, and quantity of hair. Changes in the normal distribution of body hair and growth may indicate an endocrine or vascular disorder. Inspect the nails as well, including the nail shape, thickness, curvature, and surface, noting any grooves, pitting, bridges, or detachment from the nail bed. Changes in nail smoothness or thickness can occur with anemia. If you're finding value in this video, then please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And check out the link in the description to purchase an instant digital download of the Integumentary System and Disorders Nursing Notes, which includes the nursing assessment guidelines reviewed in this video. Here are some things to keep in mind when conducting your palpation portion of the assessment. Temperature is an important aspect to assess. Use the back of your hand to determine if the skin is warm without being hot. Skin temperature can increase with blood flow, localized inflammation, or fever. Conversely, it can decrease with circulatory problems or infection. Turgor refers to the skin's flexibility or elasticity. To test turgor, gently pinch and release a small patch of skin. As the skin is freed, it instantly returns to its previous place due to its high turgor. 
Tinting can occur in dehydrated or elderly people with low turgor. Moisture and texture are also important to assess. Skin can be damp or dry depending on environmental factors, body temperature, and age. For texture, the skin should feel smooth and firm with evenly thin surfaces in most areas. Lastly, capillary refill can be checked by depressing the nail bed and observing the return of color. Normal capillary perfusion will allow the color to return within three seconds. Now let's move on to dark skin assessment. Although structures are not different, assessing color can be more difficult. Areas where the epidermis is thin, like the lips, nail beds, and mucous membranes, are easier to assess. Darker skinned individuals have lighter palmer and plantar surfaces. It's also important to palpate areas of concern as changes in the skin texture can help with identifying rashes or lesions. To check for cyanosis, look at the lips, tongue, conjunctiva, nail beds, palms, and soles. For jaundice, check the oral mucous membranes and sclera. Bleeding can cause skin swelling and darkening. Inflammation can be detected by warmth, shiny, or taut skin. Compare the affected side with the unaffected side to assess for bleeding or inflammation. Darker skinned individuals are predisposed to certain skin and hair conditions. Here are a few examples. Keloids are an overgrowth of collagenous tissue at the site of the skin injury. Vitiligo is a total loss of pigment in the affected area, while dermatosis papulosa nigra is characterized by small, pigmented, wart-like papules on the face. Atopic dermatitis, also known as eczema, is a chronic inflammatory skin illness that causes itchy, scaly rashes on various parts of the body. Traction alopecia is temporary or permanent hair loss due to trauma from hair rollers or tight braiding. Pseudofolliculitis is an inflammatory reaction to ingrown hairs caused by shaving too near the beard. Pustules and papules may emerge in the affected area. Use the ABCDE rule to assess moles or other skin lesions for signs of potential skin cancer. The rule stands for asymmetry, border, color, diameter, and evolving. First check for asymmetry by assessing if the lesion is symmetrical or if one half is larger than the other half. Next, evaluate the border of the lesion to see if it's irregular. Check the lesion for variations in color or the presence of multiple colors. Measure the lesion's diameter to evaluate if it's greater than 6 millimeters. And check for any evolving features such as changes in size, shape, or color of the lesion over time. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and thank you for watching.